This legend was the world's greatest karate fighter. Renowned for techniques rarely seen in world-class competition, from incredible axe and crescent kicks, and spinning hook kicks to the leg and the head, he was able to do it all. At the time when karate fighters dared to prove themselves in the ring, he was the one who rose to the top. Every fight was nothing short of spectacular. He fought with his whole heart, giving the fans his soul in every single fight. You see, this is a once in a lifetime talent, and there's a reason why he was the highest paid kickboxer in the world. Even Japan considers him, a Swiss national, top 100 historical persons of all time. At a young age of 15, this prodigy already dominated Switzerland's adult national karate competition. Then as an adult, during the height of the golden era of kickboxing, he gave us spectacular fights that the world will never forget. In his home country, his fights would sell out stadiums, making kickboxing bigger than soccer during his prime. But on top of all that, he was a gentleman's type of fighter, a truly composed, respectful and humble athlete. Fight fans, welcome back to another episode of Lawrence Kenshin Striking Breakdowns. In this episode, we feature Andy Hoog's legendary story. Like many of the greatest fighters in history, Andy came from humble beginnings. Andy's father was an elite soldier who passed without ever seeing his son. Unfortunately, Andy was put up for adoption due to his mum's inability to take care of him. After years in the orphanage, he was eventually taken in by his grandparents, but his home situation made him a target for bullying. The circumstances initially turned Andy to street life, but then he found sports, making the Swiss national team in soccer. Then at 10 years old, despite the strong opposition of his grandparents, he signed up for karate. Karate took him off the streets, and by the age of 15, he got a waiver to compete in the national karate competition and then won the whole tournament. Dominating adults as a teenager earned him a spot on the national team and allowed him to compete internationally. After showing tremendous success in international competitions, Andy became the first non-Japanese athlete to make it to the final round of the Kyokushin World Open. This is a huge accomplishment because the tournament is considered the Olympics of Karate which is held every four years. His accomplishments in Karate already made him a popular athlete in Japan, but what happened next would make him a true superstar. Andy would turn to kickboxing during the height of the golden era of kickboxing in K1 spending his entire professional career there. The best part was that at heavyweight, Andy was almost always the smaller fighter. But that didn't matter. This legendary karateka was able to stand his ground and walk the bigger fighters down, defeating the best of the best. His kickboxing resume was nothing short of spectacular, including wins over Ernesto Host, Jerome Labana, Peter Ertz, Mirko Krokop, Ray Sefo, and Chang Puk Yasonle. This track record easily puts him in the greatest of all time category. Indeed, by 1996, Hood was crowned K1's Grand Prix champion, the highest honour for a heavyweight kickboxer in the world. Even more impressively, he used the famous Hood tornado to KO Mike Bernardo in the final match of the tournament. Throughout the epic fight, even though Bernardo was walking down the smaller opponent, Hoog never relented and kept firing an outside low kick. This eventually added up over time and Hoog was even able to knock down his opponent with the low kick. With Bernardo's leg now wobbled, Hoog was now on the hunt and he eventually found a perfect time to do his signature Hoog tornado kick. No one else in history has been able to do this technique so effectively. After the prolific win, in a beautiful moment, Hoog would carry his opponent across the ring to celebrate with him. For two more years, Hoog would make it to the finals and losing only to the great Ernesto Host and Peter Ertz. If Hoog had kept going, surely he would have won another Grand Prix title eventually. Unfortunately, it is not how history went. In the year 2000, while still in his prime defeating some of the very best fighters in the world, Hoog sadly passed away. He was so loved that more than 12,000 people attended his funeral, including the Swiss president. 
To end off this video, we'll leave you with this beautiful quote passed on by Andy's wife. It was difficult for us for a long time, and finally I had to remember the words which Andy lived by in order to get through it. He always said, no matter what you are going through or doing, never give up, never stop trying. And the way I did that, despite my grief, was to realize that Andy is still very much alive. Not only in mine and my son's heart, but he was alive in everything we did every day. And he is now even more alive in the heart of everyone. If I had to share one message with you from Andy, it would be this. Never give up, because you think something is too difficult. And never stop trying to pull through, because you will discover that even if you do not win, you have become stronger. I had to learn what Andy always knew, the hard way. Only losing will let the victories that will come late to shine brighter. Thank you, Legend, for giving us all the great fights with your heart. If you enjoyed this episode, you can support us by watching another one. I'm Lawrence Kenshin, and thank you for keeping our channel alive.